instructions for before we start in a minute. Uh, in case you want to type in any questions, you want to ask any questions, you can just type them in in the chat box or you can raise your hand uh, and we'll try to uh, answer them during the session or after the session uh, as in when the relevant topic comes in. And uh, you can keep your phones on silent mode whenever your mic is uh, turned on. Yeah. So Shreya, can we start then? Um, more people will keep joining in. Sure, we can start. OK, fair enough. So um, thank you, uh, everyone, for joining in today in the next session of our Health Pay Charcha series. And the topic for today is a very interesting one. It's called Know Your Calories, and which is very relevant for us today. It's presented by Farmdidi team, who is very happy to welcome our two panelists for the day. Uh, firstly, we have Ms. Minal. She is a mother of two kids, uh, married for last 10 years, and a housewife. And uh, she loves reading listening to music and cooking. And she's very health conscious and her mantra is that health is the greatest wealth. And we also have with us uh, our esteemed doctor, uh, Dr. Kiran Kore. She is an Ayurvedic doctor. She is MD Ayurveda, PGDND, and consulting Ayurvedic physician and nutritionist. She has been practicing in her own clinic for the last six years, uh, which is known as Punarnava Ayurveda Panskarna and Diet Clinic. And she has conducted seminars on a lot of similar topics like obesity and nutrition, women's health, kids' nutrition, and diet in lifestyle disorders. So now we have a background of the speakers and a little bit uh, about the topic for the day. Uh, let's just uh, dive straight in. Today we have a lot of access to information and we get to know a lot of you know small, small details about our cells, our bodies, and uh, whatever do in our, we do in our daily lives. And inevitably, we land up into conversations about the food that we consume. So we thought, why not, you know, uh, uh, understand more about it. And uh, we can start off, I think, by settling down on the definition of the word calories. And uh, who better than a doctor herself to uh, uh, tell us uh, more about this. So uh, Dr. Kiran, uh, how would you describe calories, if I may ask? And how does an individual know, you know, the right amount of calories that needs to be consumed by them? Could you tell us uh, something about that? Yes. First of all, thank you for having me on Help Pay Charcha. Uh, thank you. I would like to share my screen. Yeah, please go ahead. You can just go to the presentation so we can uh, uh, directly see it. Yes. Uh, can you see my slide? Yes, we can see it. OK. On a lighter note, calories are like tiny creatures that live in your closet and sieve your clothes a little bit tighter every night. But what really is a calorie? Calorie is a unit of measure for energy that our body uses for all our vital processes. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, calories are the energy we gain after we um, consume the food. And they should be in the sufficient quantity uh, so that you maintain a reasonable body weight and also in the kids for normal growth and development okay so the number of calories obtained from a food is its calorific value it's like a fuel to our body and every food varies in its calorific value due to the amount of carbohydrates fats and proteins in each of them and this calorie intake depends on your height on your weight age the shape of your body gender physical activity general health and the type of food you are eating Okay, so now we'll see the calorie requirement. So as per the type of work, uh, as per the physical activity or your lifestyle, uh, sedentary work, that is, uh, you can say IT field or clerical jobs, you know, that comes under sedentary work. So they may require around 2,400 calories per day. Modern work like uh, drivers, uh, maids, 
they require 2900 calories uh, per day and heavy work like daily wage laborers they may require around 3800 calories uh, it slightly less in women than men like 1800 for sedentary 2200 for moderate and 2900 for heavy work so we can say that 25 calories per kg of your ideal body weight okay and how to calculate the ideal body weight you can just um see your height in centimeters and minus 100 from your height uh, for males and 105 uh, height height in centimeters minus 105 for females okay so um, you need to increase the amount of calorie by 5 to 10 calories per kg of your ideal body weight in underweight then calorie requirement is more in uh, pregnancy like 350 to 400 calorie extras then for uh, lactation period first 6 months mother is feeding so she requires 600 calories extra next 6 months 520 calories extra and uh, if the person is overweight uh, so it's better to uh, decrease the calories by 5 to 10 calories per kg of your ideal body weight again as per your age you can see in this uh, chart that uh, from the age of 2 to 50 gradually the calorie intake increases and after 50 the calorie intake decreases gradually because of a uh, low physical activity after 50s okay also depending on the body type like ectomorph these are mostly uh, lean body type they require more calories especially carbs their metabolism is high then mesomorph they are moderate uh, kind of body so they need moderate calories moderate carbs endomorph we can say stout body and they require low carbs apart from this we can also see um, apple shape and pear shape body especially in obese person so in both of the body types be it apple like it's a central obesity fat deposition is in viscera uh, stomach uh, abdomen and uh, for the pear shape the fat deposition is in thighs uh, just because there is uh, so much of fat deposition the metabolism becomes really slow so in both of the body types the requirement of calories will be very less uh also in certain illnesses like if you consider the thyroid um, ailments if there is hyperthyroidism you will require uh, less uh, amount of calories and if it's hypo you will need more okay after a chronic illness to recuperate you will need more calories then if it's hyperlipidemia if it's heart disease diabetes you may require and you are obese then uh, the calorie requirement again goes down so depending upon your health condition also the calorie requirement varies a lot okay so along with uh, you know calorie intake it's also necessary to that we uh, utilize or we expend the calories properly what happens is if we consume more calories than required then definitely there will be weight gain and if we uh, consume less calories than required there will be weight loss so this is imbalance therefore calorie intake should be equal to total energy expenditure that is energy in should be equal to energy out and this is called as energy balance thank so you maintaining so much for balance is very important thank you so much for that lovely introduction uh i mean can i go to minel i uh, minel what do you do to you know have the right balance of carbohydrates proteins and fats in the diet for your family like what is your uh, mantra if we may ask yeah as we all know that we must include three macronutrients in every meal which are proteins carbohydrates and fats these nutrients not only provide us calories that our body needs for energy but also helps in regulating our hormones and our blood sugar levels uh, to strike a balance between these three nutrients i aim for around one third of my food to come from fruits and vegetables one third from whole grains and starches and one third from proteins uh, as indians i feel we all are very lucky because our staple diet consists of roti rice dal and sabzi which is uh, mostly balanced with proper amount of uh, fats proteins carbohydrates and fiber but one can't have roti rice dal and sabzi for breakfast lunch and dinner so that's why i try to prepare uh, dishes for my family which have 
uh, got the correct amount of all the three nutrients in them. Uh, some of the options for breakfast are South Indian dishes like idli, dosa, uttapam. And when we serve it with coconut chutney and sambar, it becomes a balanced meal in itself. Uh, I try to modify these dishes a little bit. So instead of uh, serving a plain dosa, sometimes I make a ragi dosa or a bajra dosa or a shezwa dosa with a vegetable filling in it. And uh, some of the uh, options for sandwiches are peanut butter sandwich and a chickpea sandwich, which is very high in protein. And uh, one can add lots of vegetables uh, in it. Uh, some options for dinner would be a vegetable khichdi or a soya pula or a whole wheat pita bread served with uh, hummus and vegetables. So these are some of the meals which I prepare for my family <clears throat> to strike a balance between all the three nutrients. Fair enough. So I think that's that's a good enough effort. I think now we know a little bit about what calories are and uh, what we should be uh, taking and one data point at least from Menal as to what people might usually be doing to achieve that. So uh, maybe Dr. Kiran, can you elaborate a little more on the energy balance that you were talking about? Like, where do we get our calories from and how do we really spend them? Uh, like, how can we, you know, keep a tab? Okay. Okay, so... Uh... Basically, food con consists of nutrients and there are two, we can categorize nutrients into two parts like macro and micro and micronutrients are mostly carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Okay, so uh, these are the main sources of calories. These are the uh, caloric nutrients and apart from uh, carbs, proteins and fats, all the other nutrients are and water are uh, non-caloric nutrients. Okay, so among these, uh, the highest uh, contributor is fat. Fats contributes 9 calories per gram. Carbs contribute 4 and proteins also contribute 4 calories per gram. Now, uh, you can see food pyramid. Right? So, this is for a healthy person. And this can be changed as per your requirement. But the suggested, uh, you, we usually suggest like 6 to 11 servings of uh, grains. That is usually carbs. And then three to five servings of vegetables, two to four of fruits, then dairy substances. And I mean, this is basically protein. So like legumes, seeds, nuts, uh, all these two to three uh, servings. And then sparingly fat and added sugars and two liters of water per day. Okay. So this all consists of uh, food intake. Apart from this, we have major five groups of food. And they are categorized mainly um, depending on the principal nutrients they supply. Okay, like bodybuilding foods are mostly dals, nuts, oil, seeds and milk. So they supply protein, iron, fat, vitamin A, B, D, calcium. Okay, and there are protective foods in them. There are two groups of vegetables. Like first group contains green leafy vegetables. Then colored vegetables like yellow colored, orange colored vegetables and fruits. And they are mostly vitamin C rich, vitamin A rich. They supply iron, fiber, okay, phytochemicals, means basically antioxidants. Then other vegetable fruits are like a gourd family, like loki, tindinol, lady's finger, brinjal, okay, apples, melons, roots and tubers like potatoes, yam. Okay, this comes under other category. They supply majorly starch and fiber. Fourth group is cereals and millets. They, uh, as you know, cereals and millets like wheat, rice, maize, jowar, bajra. So they mainly supply carbs, then proteins, cellulose, and thiamine. And the energy group like simple carbs like sugar and jaggery, oils and fats. And they supply essential fatty acids, which is required for synthesis of vitamin D and absorption of vitamin E. Okay, so this uh, all consists of calorie intake. And how does uh, how do we expend them? How do we burn calories? So there's a term called basal metabolic rate. So which measures the minimum number of calories required by a person to uh, function his body, like basic functions of his body, uh, 
that may include you know even the maintaining the temperature of your body or the blood circulation digestion okay so even that requires energy so you can calculate the uh, exact number of calories required by you for a day so that you can calculate by weight in kgs into 24 hours into 1.5 Uh, apart from this also you can uh, there's a device called calorie meter you can just check around uh, if uh, some multi speciality has it and even that gives more accurate um, uh, measures of your bmr okay so 60% of total calories are spent for your metabolic rate and then after that among it 5 to 10% of total calories are required alone for digesting your food apart from this what we need to do is movement like it includes exercises aerobic non aerobic and neat like non exercise activity which you do like a casual walk or uh, playing with the kids or cooking in the kitchen okay this is non exercise activity and in exercises aerobic basically they are running walking uh, swimming cycling dancing okay this come under aerobic and what aerobic in exercises aerobic exercises mostly we use the oxygen from the environment to break down the uh, fats in your body okay so they help in the uh, cardiovascular conditioning improving your lung function whereas anaerobic uh, it doesn't use the oxygen in environment but what it does is um, it uses the already deposited energy in your body and breaks down the glucose in your muscles so it builds helps to build up the muscles uh, strengthen the bone and lose fat uh, more fastly compared to aerobic and mostly all the strength training exercises come under anaerobic okay and then definitely there are um, yoga asanas so uh, what you can do is start with aerobic exercises and then gradually include uh, anaerobic in your routine okay that may help and uh, as i say that for a week you need to burn at least 1200 calories okay so if you exercise okay. even 30 minutes for four days per week you burn 1200 calories per week okay you can keep that target So, so doctor as a layman maybe i can just uh, do a quick yes. question 60% yes. is a big number so does it mean to suggest that sleeping also is a very important activity in burning calories yes yes definitely because if uh, your sleep and wake cycle like circadian rhythm if and if that is not proper and you are consuming low calories then even then your metabolism will be sluggish and even then uh, there are the cases where they gain weight okay so yes even uh, proper sleeping uh, uh, requires calories thank you okay so like we can see see uh, like walking these are uh, different activities and calories burned per hour like walking uh, may it depends on your intensity basically so 240 to 300 like jogging 420 to 480 cycling 200 to 400 uh, you can see even gardening 5 to 8 calories per minute even eating as we saw you know food digestion also 5 to 10% calories we require for digestion so eating also requires 84 calories we burn 84 calories and then cleaning your house even for 30 minutes okay so you will burn 152 calories so that is the best way to keep your house clean and burn your calories also do we have uh, you know uh, some idea how do we get an idea you know uh, to break it down to the food that we eat like can you show us what food consists of what calories so that we get a better yeah. idea and we can you know take this up for discussion so basically these are the value standard values given by national institute of nutrition okay so uh, these are caloric values of some common foods like uh, tea coffee coffee is you have a more quantity of milk so it's high on calorie 115 compared to tea then dal 145 curry is 94 sprouts curry is 130 fruit juices it varies from 60 to 191 because it depends on the fruit um, calorie and then if you compare the milk 
buffalo milk is high on calorie compared to cow milk butter milk has very low calorie very low calorie diet like 23 only so even if you take 1 teaspoon of oil it's 45 even if you take 1 teaspoon of ghee it's 45 okay so apart from that soft drinks alcoholic drinks milk shakes mayonnaise this all things are very high in calories and not a good source of calories like they can start somewhere around 100 to or uh, they can go 250 or above okay so uh, to measure this uh, these are everyone has this uh, like a spoon tablespoon katori in their house so one teaspoon is around 5 ml uh, one tablespoon is around 15 ml one cup or we say katori it's 150 varies from 150 approx to 200 One glass is two fifty. One soup bowl is three fifty, three hundred to three fifty ml approx. So apart from that, um, we have meat chapatis, okay, and uh, bhakri like roti, jawar roti, bajara roti. Uh, but look at the caloric difference. The rotis are around same size, same measure, but uh, rotis are three fifteen, whereas chapati is hundred to one forty. Why? Because uh, you know the millets. Are higher in fibers, and they take longer time to digest. I think you have satiety value. So yes, they are high in calories compared to uh, wheat chapati. And even you can see rice. One cup of rice also gives you hundred calories, around hundred calories. Okay. Uh, naturally, parathas will give more calories compared to simple chapatis. Then yes, two idlis, hundred and ten dosa, one twenty. Biscuits. One biscuit can give you around twenty to twenty-five calories. So apart from that, naan, maida paratha, pav, uh, bread, be it white or brown, then uh, pizza. Pizza is very high in calorie. Like one six-inch pizza can give you five hundred and ten calories. Then there are vegetables like leafy vegetables. One cup of leafy vegetables again it varies from eighty four to one eighty three. Then uh, the leafy vegetable with lowest calorie is palak spinach, and then higher side is methi, and all others like uh, rajgira and uh, that varies in between eighty four to one eighty three. Then raw vegetables like kumbhar is only thirteen. And whereas um, raw uh, raw food like raw vegetables like carrot. Beetroot, okay, so they consist of fifty calories per hundred grams. Other vegetables like goat family vegetables are uh, very low in calories, high in fibers, so it's around fifty to sixty only. But like potatoes, yam, uh, all uh, even uh, cauliflower, all these foods are uh, around hundred, hundred and fifty calories. In fruits, if we see even um, the citrus fruits. And then melons like watermelon, musk melon, they are hardly fifteen to max thirty calories. And then the high calorie fruits like banana, uh, sapota, like chikku, custard apple, and then uh, uh, we have uh, mangoes. Okay, so or jackfruit. All these are high calorie fruits. Then in dry fruits we can see per fifteen gram fifty to three hundred. Like uh, raisins, dried raisins are low in calories. They give you around forty-five to fifty calories, uh, whereas all these almonds, walnuts, uh, pistachios, cashew nuts vary from ninety to one hundred, one hundred twenty calories. So this three hundred calories is for dry coconut. Okay, we usually, uh, especially in Souths and many of the uh, houses, use dry coconut uh, to put in the vegetables or some other delicacies. So as dry coconut for fifteen gram, it gives three hundred calories. Okay, non-vegetarian options also like egg. One egg gives eighty-five calories. Ah, uh, chicken also soup is low on calorie, goes low on calorie, and then fish, fried fish is very high on calorie, like four hundred compared to ah uh, you know grilled and mutton for fifty grams one seventy. And apart from that, all the fast food and sweets somewhere start from ah hundred or one fifty calories and above, up to five hundred to six hundred calories per serving. Okay. Thank so, basically, uh, these are the standard um, measurements uh, which we can, you know, apply. Like, if we eat one chapati, two chapati, two chapati, two chapati. So, if you are eating two, you can just calculate. Okay, two chapati is two hundred calories. That way, if you are taking one katori sabzi with it, it depends again on the sabzi you are eating. 
so you can find all the caloric values um, calorific values on the um, institute uh, national institute of nutrition's website also thank you so much that's really helpful i think a uh, lot of us will start calculating now so minel coming to you uh, usually uh, people try to set a you know set schedule as to when they eat food and when they have their meals so uh, have you seen any changes or how do you try to uh, plan your meals for your family or maybe have you seen any changes during the lockdown or something uh, can you give us some uh, observations yeah na uh, as far as the timings for the three main meals are concerned like i have a fixed timing for the three main meals so breakfast is at around 9:30 lunch uh, 1:30 and the dinner time varies depending on uh, at what time my husband is back from office but my dinner time is fixed i have my dinner by 6 o'clock and for the rest of the family members it is maybe 7:30 to 8 and even after the lockdown the timings have not changed uh, as such the timings are same but what has changed is that uh, now the kids demand uh, evening snack every day when they used to go to school i used to give them fruits in the evening but now they have uh, fruits by 11:30 or 12 so in the evening they are hungry so uh, i have to uh, give them snacks every day so some of these snacks which i give them is uh, maybe a bhel muri or a popcorn roasted makhana peanuts but uh, they also demand chips and nachos sometimes and i have to give in to their demands because uh, after all they are kids so how do you how do you prevent them on, from consuming a lot of you know over consuming the junk foods or the fast foods yes. Yeah. yeah parents are often a child's uh, first role model so if i want my child to eat healthy i should also follow the same guidelines uh one practice which i have been following since they were very young is to explain the benefits of whatever vegetables i am feeding them say for example uh, they know that broccoli is healthy but they don't like the taste of broccoli so if i will add broccoli to my pasta or noodles they will not have it but if i will make a broccoli soup they will gulp it down because they are not chewing the broccoli in the soup so since they know it is healthy they will drink it but when it comes to eating uh, raw broccoli they will not have it so again i think it is not a good idea to ban uh, junk food altogether instead i have fixed a day in a month where uh, they can go out and binge on whatever they want to have and for the uh, weekends i make junk food at home as i feel home uh, home it is always a healthier option and uh, homemade food is free of the additives and preservatives that are present in commercial products and uh, i have full control over what goes in well when i'm making it at home say for example they love burger but uh, when i'm making it at home i will always choose a whole wheat bun instead of a, a maida bun and uh, for my tikki also uh, instead of just using only potatoes i also add some mashed rajma and some vegetables i add lots of uh, salad and instead of mayonnaise i use hung curd so uh, it is on us uh, we can always make um, we can always choose healthier options to uh, so that the junk food gets converted into a healthier one that is pretty interesting you know bringing the junk back home and you know homemade mantra maybe if we could call it so th that's something nice and maybe some cues for others to follow i see one hand raised so since we have time Uh, maybe we can take this up right now we have uh, ms sunita who has raised her hand do you want to ask anything you can just turn on your mic okay maybe we can take this up later so uh, moving on uh, so dr kiran maybe coming back to you you said a lot about what foods have what calories and all but how do we select like what is good or what is bad with whether vegetarian or non vegetarian you know which food do we consume food which have a lot of calories if so then maybe limit them like what would be the options or how do we go about ensuring that what we are consuming we are aware of what is going on into our body and maybe a thumb rule to make our diet plans more effective what would be some of your tips to the, uh, to us all of us today yes definitely so see there are uh, some limitations of calorie diets like uh, 
should we think that quality matters over quantity or quantity is also important like what should be low low fat low uh, carbohydrate diet high protein diet accuracy is it uh, really possible to uh, maintain that accuracy on every single day so what to choose so i have presented an example so birds prefer eating grains and uh, as you know elephants prefer eating more of grass uh, fruits uh, okay greens more greens so why does um, a bird choose to eat grains because yeah grains are means carbs especially so can anyone answer this why do you think bird choose greens prefer greens hello i see a mic turned on rutuja you want to answer that one anyone okay. just take a wild guess maybe maybe we have 30 seconds maybe somebody can try to maybe easier a party them to eat sorry easier sorry. to easier for them to eat with the beaks okay she says easier to eat with the beaks okay uh, uh, i have one guess like uh, smaller yes. in size and it takes longer to get digested so uh, it good for their smaller size of bird okay okay so as we saw that carbs are main sources of energy and birds need to fly high okay so flying high needs more energy so they prefer eating grains because they uh, rather than eating uh, you know grass or fruits uh, the um, grains will supply more energy to them and uh, that's why birds prefer eating grains not because uh, yes they are small yes that is one answer but even they eat fruits okay but eating grains has that more reason they know that the grains carbs are giving proteins are giving more energy to them because they need more energy than elephant and even elephant is intelligent it's not eating more of carbs and fats because uh, you know it uh, it doesn't need as much as energy as bird like flying or uh, whatever so elephant prefers eating more of greens okay so yeah. likewise <laughs> even we need to choose what is important for us Uh, depending on our um, health condition depending on our body type okay depending on our lifestyle and physical activity so there are some simple guidelines to overcome these limitations like you need to have a balanced diet most important and what is balanced diet like we saw five food groups just make sure that you include one food from each group okay so there you have a balanced meal because as we saw each group gives you different set of nutrients so you don't want to uh, avoid any particular set of nutrients so better you include a food from all five food groups then time to eat like you have to maintain the time as per your biological clock circadian rhythm it's really important that you don't eat at least after 8 pm because already your digestion has started uh, you know uh, metabolism is becoming slow your digestion is becoming sluggish so uh, try to maintain a fixed time and stick to that time also many a times you know we just skip our meals and tend to overeat later so we consume more calories and no they are not going to digest uh, any time if you eat uh, one large meal at single time and skip other meals it's not going to help eating uh, all the required calories at just one day of a time or uh, you know that is not going to help the excess calories will be stored so you need to break down the calories throughout the day and uh, as per your time and stick to the time don't watch television while eating because most of the time we don't realize what and how much we are eating then as minal said that homemade food uh, we know what goes in making of it we can have control over the number of calories so prefer homemade food and uh, this is really interesting as per ayurveda you need to divide your stomach in three parts 
okay not literally but you need to fill your stomach with two parts of food one part of liquid and you should keep one part empty don't fill your stomach totally okay this way also you can keep a check on your calories maintain a food journal like you can plan a month ahead or a week ahead and at the end of the month you can just uh, you know check what uh, you could follow what needs more improvement hmm? apart from this we should be aware about empty calories okay so like i said whether only quantity is important no along with quantity we need to know the quality of the food the source of the calories is very important it's not that we are eating a, a packet of chips and we said that okay this much calories uh, we got but we got it from chips so that is empty calorie so what is empty calorie foods with little or no nutritional value but high calorific value okay so they can be carbohydrate based desserts like cakes cookies biscuits okay sugary drinks they can be chocolates processed meats then they can be ice creams short meals then processed oils they can be sauce ketchups sauce and ketchups i think um, most of the kids end up eating on daily basis elders kids okay so even they contain lots of empty calories all the fast foods ready to eat foods and alcohol so these are empty calories along with this we also need to be uh, very vigilant of what is going in when even uh, you know uh, sometimes we are uh, buying things labeled as uh, you know fat free skimmed and all these things so just to um, improve the appearance improve the texture or the flavor of the food Uh, under the name of you know some something healthy they will disguise uh, the fats sugars and salts some uh, under some other substandard substitutes okay so they are hidden calories learn to read the label of the food packaging so uh, you prefer reading per 100 gram or per 100 ml information on each rather than the per serving information per 100 gram gives you more accurate um idea of what how much fat is going how much protein is giving going into the food so uh, like you can see the fats especially they are disguised under the name of palm oil cream dripping okay like full cream milk powder mono diglycerides sugar can be disguised as uh, disaccharides raw sugar sorbitol honey even honey has 25% of Uh, sugar okay not naturally but the added sugar so uh, you prefer taking some uh, raw honey or uh, from a proper source and then salt can be under the name like uh, you know baking powder booster msg msg is uh, so much used in the chinese food okay sodium metabisulfite sodium nitrate okay so all these names uh we need to check on what it is at least once we can just see that okay this is salt this is sugar and apart from that the taste or flavor of the food okay for if you see there is some um a chocolate flavored like nutty bread okay so all this in uh, just to make the appearance or appealing uh, so these are all the hidden calories there are thickeners there are synthetic additives also chemical synthetic additives also to uh, like preservatives especially okay so they all are hidden calories and we need to be aware of this thank you so much uh, doctor so i think that's a lot of information for us and maybe few of us will uh, want to keep this with you so we'll try to share Uh, more information on this later with you also. Uh, yes. So, uh, Meenal, maybe a, a quick question to you. Uh, since obesity leads to a lot of health issues, so uh, how do you try to keep your family away from you know uh, such kinds of uh, uh, concerns, or how do you plan your family's diet so that something specific like obesity is kept away? Yeah, uh, we are a family who loves to eat. Uh, we explore healthy ways to add variety to our meals, as uh, repetition can cause boredom. Uh, having to choose healthy doesn't mean one has to give up on their favorites. Uh, to um, uh, 
I try to turn my family's favorites into healthy options. Uh, for example, instead of using uh, refined flour, I use whole wheat flour for my breads, uh, cookies, and uh, pizza uh, base. And uh, my kids, they love French fries. So what I do is uh, I make uh, baked fries for them. So I don't mind even if they are having it twice a week because I'm just using one teaspoon of oil. And uh, we love noodles. So uh, now there are a variety of noodles that are available in the market, be it soba, udon, buckwheat, millet, rice noodles. So you can really choose what your family likes. One doesn't have to choose uh, maida noodles. And I prefer using uh, less oil for my everyday cooking. And even if I'm making something fried, I prefer that I make it for lunch only. We prefer a very light, easy to digest uh, dinner. We don't... Um, like I don't prepare an extra wagon dinner and my family loves to have puri with uh, chola. So when I'm making puri, I make sure that I make chola without oil. So and um, I use uh, like uh, as far as sandwiches are concerned, I don't like to use too much butter or cheese. Instead, I use hunkered hummus or a peanut butter and, uh, you know, just uh, making small changes, uh, making small changes. Uh, in eating habits can reduce obesity and uh, it can help in maintaining the overall health of the family. Great. So we get another mantra from this conversation, start small and uh, do big changes. So uh, there's one more question. Uh, maybe uh, Dr. Kiran, you would uh, like to answer. It's a question from Mr. Arkit. He's saying, uh, so uh, like Meenal said earlier about, you know, having an early dinner around 6 p.m. And in case the next major meal happens in the morning, say around 7 to 8 a.m. on the next day. So uh, the question is like, how favorable is this uh, long, you know, a gap of approximately 14 hours uh, as we grow with age? If you could uh, tell us more. Um, is this same as the intermittent fasting being exercised by Bollywood professionals? If I have to quote the question. Dr. Yeah, intermittent fasting, uh, actually, you know, you have to uh, gradually start with suddenly you can't increase the gap that may mm -hmm. lead to acidity bloating in some people. Uh, so uh, 6 p.m., 6 to 7 p.m. and early morning 7 to 8 is okay, I think. Uh, because you know your last meal and your uh, sleep, at least you should have two to three hours gap between your dinner and your sleep. So it's not that you just take the dinner and sleep immediately. Even that doesn't help digest the food properly. So that gap is perfectly fine. And uh, intermittent fasting requires, you know, proper guidance. Okay. Yeah. So I hope, uh, Mr. Arpit, that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, then finally, Dr. Kiran, maybe if you could, you know, finish off with uh, telling us uh, if we have to ask, you know, what should be an ideal diet plan or for yeah. somebody who is looking for some target of, you know, weight reduction or something. Uh, okay. What so these are diet, sorry, you can see the screen. Yeah, we can see it. Yes. Maybe uh, you can uh, press uh, uh, Control and L uh, to uh, put it full screen. Somebody suggested in the... Just uh, click on the presentation itself and uh, press Control and L together so it will go to full screen in case you can do that. Okay, fair enough. Can I think... Uh, just zoom in. Uh, there is a plus sign. Okay. Yeah, fair okay. enough. Yeah, this is better. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So this gives you approx around 2000 calories, 220-200 calories. Okay. So I have given some healthy option, easy to and uh, which you can prepare at home easily. So for breakfast, you can have like a whole green moon chila with green chutneys. You can have egg white omelette and uh, you can have uh, meated hepla or any parathas basically. Then you can have one soup bowl of vegetable dalia. Then there are thali pits where you can add lots of vegetables. And uh, this is also the good way to include other uh, millets like jowar and bajra, maybe basin. Okay. Then uh, two to three idlis, two medium dosas. I have given the quantity, 
also one small plate of vegetable upama you can add a veggies uh, along with you know the like a wheat uh, semolina or wheat sevaya you you get you get uh, ragi um, semolina also so uh, these are the good options for breakfast then for the lunch you can have two to three fulkas or uh, you know there is no oil in fulkas uh, so more two to three fulkas you can have or one and half one to one and half of chapati just increase the amount of um, uh, vegetables and uh, indian diets mostly for short on especially vegetarians for short on protein so uh, make sure that you include protein uh, at least in your breakfast lunch and dinner one one serving at least one or two servings so two small bowl of vegetables one small of dal not just dal you can use sprouts curry you can use legume curry kadhi okay uh, salad prefer in uh, prefer salads during lunch so one carrot or cucumber or tomato you can um, instead of just plain salad you can make raita okay uh, for south indians uh, there are those who don't eat chapati so you can go up to rice uh, for one one and half uh, one to two bowls of uh, rice along with the vegetable sambar uh, rasam okay then for snacks you can have steamed or boiled sprouts like lahi uh, this is really wonderful just like makhana you get uh, puffed jowar or rice you can just roast them or make a porridge out of them and you can have it mm. then makhana has roasted peanuts chana rajkira uh seasonal fruits seasonal fruits can also be wonderful uh, uh, you know option for snacks then uh, soaked raisins 10 to 12 2 to 3 almonds you can have one homemade laddu buttermilk then limbu or kokum sherbet you can easily replace your um, if you someone is trying to uh, stop their uh, over indulgence of tea or coffee then you can uh, go for rice ganji or ragi ganji then there is muthiya you can add uh, to your uh, base and you can add coriander methi palak okay you can uh, without frying you can just have it it's quite tasty and for dinner uh, it's better to keep light uh, what you can also do is if one time you are having rice uh, or chapa wheat then for the dinner you can include other millets like jowar or bajra roti along with the vegetables and dals or you can go for dal rice with vegetables or only a vegetable khichdi can do you know even uh, if you had more uh, lunch or if you had some uh, you know junk or maybe over eating during the day you can also uh, just have a simple vegetable soup or chicken soup uh, for the dinner time apart from this uh, calories if you say calories we mostly associated associated with uh, weight gain or weight loss so what we recommend is for weight loss um weight loss you have to decrease 500 calories per day okay so soaked almonds to one alm- you can start your day with soaked almonds like two one uh, walnut uh, also ash gourd juice is very wonderful to start your day with like 200 ml of ash gourd juice then you can have all seasonal fruits okay as a snack uh, but better to avoid banana custard apple chikku then milk shakes because there's also fruit and there's also milk both are quite high in calories and heavy to digest so smoothies fruit juices better to avoid this uh, if you're trying to lose weight and then butter milk uh, you can have coconut water uh, warm lemon water kokum water and there are uh, soups and there are vegetable juices Uh, like a uh, carrot juice you can add palak lock your tomato to it and start including millets once a day rather than only eating wheat and rice okay um and also you can go for supplements but i usually don't suggest until and unless it's very necessary and that too uh, you have to take supplements under proper guidance and for weight gain you have to increase 500 calories per day okay then for that uh, just look at the difference See here you can for weight loss you can have just two almonds here you can have three to four and uh, soaked raisins like 15 to 20 raisins you can have and then uh, even for the uh, fruits you can have as a mid morning snack this orange mosambi like citrus fruits and pomegranate especially you can have after lunch if you are not gaining weight because of you know poor absorption 
um, of iron and other nutrients, especially iron. So what you can do is you can uh, start having one orange or one mosambi or uh, you know one small category of uh, pomegranates. Uh, after the lunch so what it does it absorbs the you know, the vitamin c and it helps absorb the iron from the food and other nutrients from the food so that way you can um, healthily gain the weight then after that the uh, laddu homemade laddus are very good options then you can include cow milk one cup of cow milk morning evening uh, include 2 to 3 teaspoons of uh, ghee with your food and uh, for breakfast also you can have eggs you can have any kind of parathas and uh, you know there are lots of options so uh, even supplements are there for weight gain again i would suggest that you take uh, only if necessary uh, when along with diet um, you need some support you can take supplements but under proper guidance okay thank you so much so we have two questions which have come in so let's just take them first so the first one is from ish sharma uh, so the question is what is right calories for kids should uh, one measure it and then give their plan their diet and how to do it so um, how how to go about you know ensuring the right calories go to the our kids okay for kids even uh, kids as i showed in uh, age wise no uh, like for 2 to 3 years they start with a 1000 calories and there are customized diet charts even for the kids but it's really difficult to uh, you know have that accuracy uh, especially for kids so we can't uh, monitor everything or we can't uh, force them uh, to eat more or eat less uh, so just make sure that you uh, keep healthy options and you also um, you know uh, make it a habit for yourself and for kids to stick to the time that इतने बजे खाना है प्रिटी अर्ली फ्रॉम आई थिंक वन वन एंड हाफ इयर यू स्टार्ट मेकिंग टाइम टेबल फॉर देम सेट अ रूटीन फॉर देम एंड डोंट एक्सपोज देम टू अन हेल्दी ऑप्शन बेटर कीप रेडी सम हेल्दी लड्डू मे बी और पराठाज मे बी ओके सो यू कैन प्लान इट द कैलरीज वॉट एवर रिक्वायर्ड एज पर देअर एज एंड दैट वे यू कैन ट्राई टू गिव दैम but it's up to kids at last <laughs> if they uh, you know if they are hungry and they um, ask for it even between the uh, you know uh, snacks and dinner okay it's okay to give them because they are quite active they are burning the calories also so not any issue and a, a associated question to that is uh, again from mr arpit it's like is the calorie intake also linked or associated with metabolism of an individual like individuals having better metabolism may consume more calories and yes. uh, vice versa yes uh, actually they consume more calories not if uh, they have good metabolism uh, they burn calories very well so they don't gain weight okay, okay. so uh, even you can see in um, obese person overweight person their metabolism is sluggish not so good but uh, they are consuming uh, more calories they are having craving so it has nothing to do how much they consume actually uh, it is like uh, if you have a good metabolism you burn uh, good calories good amount of calories and you burn it very efficiently okay fair enough and uh, there is one last question which is from the via so the question is how should we take care of micronutrients uh, is is there any thumb rule or something yeah like i said you you have to have a balanced diet and balanced diet is basically include uh, food from each of those food groups okay like we saw the protective food hmm? fruits and vegetables these are protective foods so compulsory um, you have to have uh, two to three servings of vegetables and two to three servings of fruits if not fruits on some particular day if you are not able to have the fruits just include uh, just add some more leafy vegetables to your dal that way you can include how to include see easy ways you can make one vegetable from one group and for the other group you can just mix it up with like i uh, i, I said like uh, adding leafy vegetables or goat family vegetables to your dals or for making making some parathas for your breakfast you can make loki paratha meethi paratha for your breakfast 
so these are some different ways of you can add vegetables to your dalia or uh, you know upma or like you can make uh, a tikkis also you can make mutias so this way uh, don't just depend on one food group Fair enough. So, of, uh, you know, thinking of all different kinds of food, just keep in mind these five food groups, and uh, try to include one from each of them. Fair enough. And uh, similar uh, question, which introduces something different, is like uh, how much calories do oil-free pickles have? So, is there a, any limit or you know quantity that one could consume? Maybe. Sorry. specifically uh, oil free pickles or maybe pickles how much quantity can be consumed or maybe uh, do they have a lot of calories in them oil free pickles yeah pickles oil free pickles in yeah. general as a category yeah no you can have like there is haldi and avla pickle that uh, usually doesn't have oil mm -hmm. so yes you can uh, uh, but a quantity i would suggest yeah one teaspoon One teaspoon. Because uh, again, I think there goes mustard. If there is mustard, there is some. Uh, it's very negligible actually. But uh, chutneys, uh, pickles of any sort, papads of any sort, uh, these all are um, to be consumed in hardly one one to two teaspoon uh, quantity only. And definitely, no one will consume it like uh, you know, like we eat vegetables of that quantity. Definitely not. But you can have oil-free pickle every day, like avla haldi pickle. You can have. Fair enough. And just one mm -hmm. last question from the audience, I think. Uh, so, do vegans get enough nutrition? Uh, asked by Shetaj. So, do vegans do uh, mm -hmm. the, you follow the vegan diet? Do they get mm -hmm. enough nutrition and uh, benefits of being uh, gluten-free? Uh, any comments on that from your side gluten free yes gluten free is basically only uh, free from you know wheat uh, you can go for millets they are wonderful replacement for gluten okay jowar is easily available uh, throughout the year bajra maybe you can include only in winters because it is a bit on uh, hotter side hot potency so you can include jowar you can include ragi you can include rajgira so these are all um, good replacements fair enough and always there are dals legumes pulses all other uh, food groups they can include along with millets and another question uh, maybe this is the last one uh, it's like what is the calorie wise difference between soaked and non soaked dry fruits like all almonds like why soaked is preferred if it is no it it is not about calories it's just that soaking makes them easier to digest there are some enzymes in dry fruits uh, which may you know uh, not allow the proper absorption of uh, uh, calcium especially uh, so it's better to have them soaked rather than just eating them fair enough that is the reason there is no calorie connection to soaking Okay, even for kids, you mean to say that's uh, good enough, right? For kids also, you can uh, give. Yes, yes, right. yes. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, maybe Meenal, uh, uh, sorry to keep you away from the audience for a long time. So any no, any comments okay. or any final mantras that you want to leave us with? We already heard a few of yours, homemade and starting small. Yeah. Small changes. Yeah, like um, yeah, my basically my. fitness mantra includes a uh, simple yoga techniques with more emphasis on pranayam and i do jogging every day for half an hour uh, apart from that i am a big foodie i have never been on a diet and i always like even if i am craving for something i always prefer to make it at home so one advice even for people who are trying to lose weight would be you know to make everything at home So, like, uh, because homemade uh, homemade food has uh, much more less calories than what we uh, find at, uh, at 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 a restaurant. So, this would be my advice for everyone. And um, I include a lots of fruits and vegetables in my diet. I do fast uh, every month, like uh, once in a month, when I don't eat anything. I just drink water, and uh, and uh, yeah, early dinner. That's my fitness mantra. thank you so much uh, the time is also running short so maybe one last comment from uh, dr kiran uh, anything you want to say to our audience before we bid goodbye 
Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, there's a saying in Ayurveda that uh, uh, when your diet is proper, uh, you don't need medicine. And, uh, you know, when your diet is not proper, the medicine is of no use. So it's always better you focus more on your diet so you don't need to take medicines. Uh, so, yeah, have a balanced diet. Okay. And, so yeah. Maybe we, you can answer one more question, which is just coming before we leave. So, Ms. Gayatri is asking, how much amount of proteins can we take every day? So, maybe she uh, is... Proteins is... Diet, yeah. Sorry? Maybe she is trying to have, go on a protein diet or something. So, yeah. Okay. Protein is ideally 1 gram per kg of your body weight. Okay. So... Yeah. But going on a protein diet, just make sure that you don't totally leave out carbs, uh, you know, just uh, right from the beginning. It's a gradual process. Or the body may go in ketosis. So, yeah. Okay. And uh, another question on uh, whether protein supplements are healthy. So now the questions are coming in. See, um, the way I look at supplements is um, you should not take them very casually. Like I want to lose weight, I'll take protein supplements. No, uh, it's just like uh, a medicine, not uh, exactly medicine, but it's a nutraceutical. You know, so you need to take it under proper guidance. You try uh, with the food first, you know, healthy options you can try. You can include uh, exercises in your routine. And um, in spite of that, if you're not able to lose weight, uh, then yeah, maybe uh, you can go for supplements. But, uh, um, you know, even the kind of supplement uh, you need, uh, the dietitian can decide better because each and every um, uh, this supplement has different set of uh, uh, combinations. Uh, the per serving has uh, different uh, types of measurements. So better take uh, guidance uh, and then you can go for it. Okay. So uh, I think that's all. There's one more comment from Ms. Gayatri. Ms. Gayatri, would you like to ask it yourself? Uh, uh, what the follow-up question on protein? You can just unmute yourself if you want to speak. Hello, Ms. Gayatri, can you hear us? Yes, uh, I uh, I yes. know the protein is the form of protein and okay. which is given by the um, Puna Macharya. She is uh, told that it is a uh, very effective for weight loss and also it uh, used as a protein supplement. Okay, protein. So it is uh, every day it is. Okay, so. Uh, if someone has suggested you, I think uh, maybe they have your proper history. They have taken your proper history and then suggested you. So you can try. Okay. Okay. So I think no further questions. So yeah. So thank you so much for uh, everybody for joining in. Uh, very thanks. Big thanks to our both panelists, uh, Dr. Kiran and uh, Meenal, for giving their insights, a lot of in information, which uh, will be helpful for us. And we might ad adopt a more scientific approach loaded with some mantras as Meenal adopts them in our daily routine. So I think that's a good healthy discussion and uh, we await for our next uh, session of the Health Pay Charcha series and we'll, uh, we'll be back soon. So thank you so much everybody for joining in. Have a good weekend. and Thank uh, you for having us. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot everybody. Take care.